be teaching this isn't going to change anything. The level of trades that are being pushed through these markets is not going to be changed by you watching these videos because honestly, I've taught for years and there's a lot of people that just simply cannot follow instructions. They can't follow rules and they want to fault somebody else. They want to fault this one over here. They want to fault me. They want to fault the concepts when there's people already out there proving just from the free stuff that they're passing competitions and challenges and, you know, making money in their own accounts. You're doing very well in demo. They all have a wide range of experiences already. And I've only started the last week or so in January. So this business is very personal and it's going to reveal a lot of things about you and you're going to see things that you didn't recognize before. And sometimes it's going to be ugly. You're not as good as you thought you were. You're not as astute as you thought you were. You're not as responsible as you thought you were. Believe me, I learned those lessons in the nineties and it was not fun and you resist it. And the folks that resist it will never get it. And they'll never learn how to trade profitably from anyone else because they have a deep rooted issue within themselves. So it won't make a difference if somebody else steps in and says, Hey, I got something that's going to do it for you. ICT complicates things. I'm going to give you this thing here. You push a button and it gets you in. No, the same underlying issues that are plaguing the individual will manifest in any trading approach because they lack responsibility. Number one, they lack the adherence to rules. And they have not put enough time. If you're not getting instant gratification, you're done. That's what the main critical thing about me is because I'm lecturing, I'm teaching you what you're going to encounter. You may not feel this is applicable to you, but I guarantee you stay long enough in this. You're going to be met with this. And if I don't tell you how to deal with it, or overcome it, or think about how you should be overcoming it when you get to that bridge, Okay, because you're all going to get to it eventually. Different times, different people. Everyone grows differently. But you're going to have these crossroads where you come to, where you feel like, you know, I don't think I should be doing this anymore. I think I should be doing that. Or the grass looks greener on that over here. Or this person made money over here, and I haven't made money this week. So maybe my stuff's broken. Let me go over here and look at this. That's nonsense. There's people out there that don't trade like me. And they make millions. Because they are good money managers period that's it they have something that gives them a decision making process they call it their system okay or their edge but really they're just good money managers period they have something that instigates the idea of a transaction in the marketplace they have a faith based system in believing that as long as it doesn't do this go down to a level where they would put a stop They'll stay with that idea. And then when it gets to another level, they get out. That's trading. Okay. But the idea is, I don't think that profitable systems outside of what I'm teaching are linked to their actual system. It's linked to their adherence to their rules, sound money management, and not over trading and not over leveraging. Because literally I could flip a quarter. And you could too, with sound money management, you could make a account be profitable. Now that sounds crazy. Okay. Do it with a demo. That's what I'm suggesting to you here. Flip a quarter. If it's heads, you buy. Flip a quarter. If it's tails, you sell short. Do it every single day. Don't risk more than a half percent. Aim for one percent and do that. Buy the open, sell the open. That's it. It's all you do. Use a, I don't know, use a 30 pip stop and trade a, a Forex pair and do it, okay? And just test the idea and see how hard it is to blow the account. It takes a lot of effort to blow that account, but over time you can see that it can show profitability. Now, if you take that application and apply it to, okay, what happens if you limit your number of trades? If you remove the frequency at which you trade intra week. That means what days of the week you're actually going to specifically trade on. And then within those days, what specific time of that day are you going to trade on? And then what asset classes are you going to trade? And inside that asset class, what specific market are you going to trade? And inside that specific market, 
Are you going to be bullish or are you going to be bearish? So you're refining everything down to a, an algorithm or a recipe because a recipe is an algorithm. Okay, you have this list of ingredients and you put these ingredients and combine them in a specific order. And at the end, you should have an expected result being a cake or a cookie or whatever it is that you know, your mother or grandmother used to make for you. Bottom line is, I'm giving you recipes. Now, it's up to you to decide on well, what you're going to do with this information. I show it, as you see every single week in my mentorship group. I talk about where the market's going to go beforehand. I'm not telling you to buy or sell short anything at any one particular level. I'm pointing to where the market's going to go because I've already taught you entry strategies, but I'm not trying to force a specific entry strategy on any one student or all of you collectively because there is no pressing all of you into a mold because that will absolutely guarantee failure, failure as, an, as a mentor and it'd be failure for a community of students. I am cognizant that there is a wide disparity between my personality and everyone else's. And just as well as if we were all in a room, we would all have different personalities as well. That's going to be an issue for all of you. So my teaching style allows for you to find your own style in the tools and concepts that I teach. Now I could trade with every single one of them and my better students can do it with a, a good list of them, but I don't have one student out there that can do everything well, perfectly. That does, I haven't had that yet. I like to believe before I pass on, I will, but I don't have that yet, but I do have some extremely good traders, some consistently good profitable traders, but I also have you know, failures. You know, these folks just simply can't get it. Now, in a YouTube community, give it time. You're going to, you're going to see people commenting that they can't do it. Okay. My encouragement to all of you is the same thing I'm going to tell you that I tell my private group in their form. Do not gang up on them. Don't make fun of them. Don't say, Oh, well, you know, this, that, and thing. Um, be, be encouraging to it. Cause really if they're posting that they're hurting and they're, they, they feel frustrated and they're basically saying, unless someone intervenes right now, I'm going to quit. And I have done that. There's been nobody to tell me keep going. <laughs> okay. Back in the nineties, I just had to persevere. I'm hoping by me showing these things publicly talking about what is going to happen, where it's going to go. It proves to you that it's possible to forecast these price moves. Now, what you do is you go back inside all the moves here and decipher what it is I'm pointing to and why it was useful for you to find a setup in it. And is, does that setup repeat enough for you to justify that specific way or approach of trading? What do I mean by that? Some of my students can't day trade. They, they just don't have the ability to do it. They have businesses or school or they have jobs and they have to be, you know, making ends meet. They're, they're, elsewhere. They can't be in front of the charts. So they have to position trade. So that means they're going to have to trade on the daily chart or a four hour chart. And that's fine. You can do that. It just takes a lot of time to move from these levels here down to here. And then you got to wait a long time for the next new setup. I'm not a fan of that, but I'm not trying to discourage anybody that has to operate under those restraints. I'm forcing you to study price action. You have to learn how to tape read. And if you can't tape read, you will not be consistent in your trading period. End of story. That's the way it is because everything that you'll be doing if you make money is really not based on the market. It's based on circumstance. And believe me, I've had periods of being profitable with just dumb luck. It happened folks in the nineties. I really thought when I first started that, wow, I've read a book. You know, and I watched a couple of videos and wow, this stuff really works. And what I was really doing was just buying a perpetual bull market and everything was going up. I could have threw a dart at the wall and whatever it hit, I was buying that and it made money. Everything was going up. So it tricked me into thinking I knew what I was doing at the time and I didn't. So it's this navigation through the asset classes that experience and those with experience doing it 
know how to do. 30 years, you know, I've been doing this stuff. 30 years. And those 30 years, the greatest lessons I learned was what I'm suggesting and talking about right now. To some of you young guys, okay, it's just too much talking. But these are the things that you need to understand because they're going to be the impediments to you succeeding. Because you think every day there's going to be a big move in the euro because you see something. Just because you think you see something doesn't mean that that market is going to do anything. Look how consolidated it was for this day, here, 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 and here. Then finally it just whips down below that low. That could be very frustrating for someone that has been expecting this thing to go down. And for instance, look at the folks that would have been trying to break out, go short below that low here. It does so here and then comes ripping right back up in the same day. And that might have changed their opinion about the market going lower. But I teach that that liquidity below that old low is where it's really going to go. So these up close candles really are just opportunities to go short and then drive it lower. These are types of moves that you want to go back and back test. And then because you're doing that, what will happen is over months and years, oh, here we go. He's kicking the can down the road, justifying why his concepts don't work because I can't make them work. That means I didn't spend enough time. That's his excuse. No, it's the truth. You are going to look for a setup that you watch in a video one time and you're going to expect it to work every single day between 830 in the morning and 11 o'clock. And because you see what looks like a fair value gap, your bias is going to be wrong or your expectation on the daily candle itself, the individual daily candle, which I'll talk about and teach later on in this video. Yes, it's an impactful video tonight. It may be boring, but I got a lot of stuff in this one. You're going to do something incorrectly because you're in a rush because you want to feel like you have to know right away it works for you. And there is no right away in trading except for blowing your account. Because if you don't know what you're doing right away, you're going to blow your account. <laughs> okay. It's what's going to happen. So I talk and I teach like this. So that way, you know, you have been fortified with all these things in advance, what to look out for, what not to fall victim to, how to think about it and mental perspective on what you're doing as a trader and what the market should be doing. They have to be in agreement and it takes time for that to happen. It doesn't happen by watching a video. It doesn't happen in 40 days. Okay. It doesn't happen in 120 days. It doesn't happen in the first year. It takes a little bit of time. So there's a lot of fumbling that you're going to have to do that figure out what you are looking for. Cause right now, if you're just starting, I'm promising you right now, you have no idea what you want to do. And you're probably not realizing that what you're going to evolve into the end results of a, of a speculator, what you're doing as a trading model and how you're trading the markets. You don't even know what that is yet. That's a gradual thing that it becomes, well, obvious to someone that has taken this on as a business, not I'm going to school. I'm treating this like a college degree. Well, that's good when you first start, but you need to treat this like a business. Are you going to open up a business and just not worry about it every day? You're going to be worrying about it every day and you can put all your time and effort into it. That's how you should treat this every day, whether the transactions that you make are profitable or not, they're all learning experiences. So that's why back testing is important. Keeping a trade journal is important. Annotating your charts and referring back to how it worked off of that daily chart. All right. So here is the hourly chart. I'm just going to make it very simple, sweet to the point. There's nothing here. Absolutely zero, nothing in this chart, nothing to trade on. Not one thing. I can't look at this and say, Oh, I got to set up here or I could do that. There's nothing. Okay. Nothing here at all. Take a deep breath and hear that again. There's nothing on this chart that is noteworthy. Now think about that. Does it feel comfortable? For some of you, it doesn't feel comfortable. It's like, what? There's gotta be, no, there's nothing here. There's nothing clean in this price action. It's all back and forth, back and forth. It's sloppy price action. Okay. When I say things are sloppy, this is it. There's nothing that you can very easily pick out as, okay, it's bullish. It's going to pull down to a specific level. And I expect it to rally from there. I don't have any of that here. Nothing's in this chart that's 
noteworthy or what I would ever put money behind. So when it looks like this, we roll on. Here is the 15 minute time frame. Sloppy. Nothing here. So when you go through your charts, if the marketplace that you're looking at creates these scenarios where it's just really messy, what's the first thing you should consider? Closing the charts, turning your computer off, and go do something you love to do. Spend time with your family, good friends, and hobby chasing, whatever it is you're doing otherwise outside of the markets, which is what all of you should have a hobby outside of this, not just watch my videos or someone else's stuff. Have something that you do outside of trading because you have to have an outlet and otherwise you're going to burn out. But when the markets look like this, you don't touch them. I'm not talking about the, my community knows that I have not been really, and it breaks my heart because this has always been my favorite pair, but I have not been touching British pound for a long time. Months, months have gone by. I've not done one trade in this currency pair because it's just simply not delivering what I'm looking for. Now, some of you are thinking oh, there's proof right there. They're changing the algorithm. No, it's just a mess right now. The whole world's all messed up and trade has been affected by that. So it's going to show its hand and manifest itself in the currencies. And this is what you have. Trust me, folks, in the offing, just over the horizon, there's something about to happen. And when that happens, these markets are going to get real, real excited and they're going to be moving around a lot. And everybody's going to be like, man, I'm going to go and trade Forex. Trust me, that day's coming. What day is it exactly? I don't know. But I'm being patient until it manifests itself. When it does, you're going to know it. Everybody's going to know it. But when it creates that, man, it's going to be what I call salad days. It just means easy trading. So don't, don't get bummed out by looking at this and thinking, oh, this is actually a good thing. Because it teaches you when not to be doing anything. When it feels alien, it feels counterintuitive or counterproductive or the opposite of what you're in here learning about. You're thinking, I'm learning how to do this, so I should be able to open up a chart and go and find a setup. Yes, that's reasonable for a neophyte, but you want to learn how to do this profitably, right? I mean, I would hope you would want that. You want to do things consistently, right? Hopefully, that's what you're trying to do. I'm trying to promote that in you. Maybe that's not what you thought about when you first started, but you want to be able to know why you're doing something and when not to do it. Knowing when not to do something is crucial because it'll keep you from blowing your account. It'll keep you from being undisciplined and it'll give you peace of mind. It'll remove that fear of missing out. I don't have any fear of missing any of this price action here. It's not going to, it, it, I'm not losing any sleep over it. And you shouldn't either. And when your market, whatever that market is, is performing like this, just leave it alone. Take a break. You don't need to trade today. You don't need to trade tomorrow. If you feel that, understand this and listen, okay? Put the potato chips down. Put your drink down. Listen. You do not need to trade every single day. Despite what you're thinking and feeling, you don't. What you need to do is understand why today or tomorrow is a day that's highly probable that your bias will deliver to a target that you already know that is likely to be treated to. But you have to have an expectation of where it's going to go. Where is it going next, higher or lower? If you can't reasonably outline that, then you're gambling. And if you're trying to trade every day, or you have this impulse that you have to be trading, you have to be in there, you have to be doing it. That's a gambler's mentality. I do not promote gamblers. I do not promote gambling. I do not promote over leveraging. I do not promote lucky over leverage trading. I promote one contract, work on trying to double your account. How long does it take? I don't know. How long is it going to take you? I don't know. But that should be your goal. Work with the lowest leverage and try to double your account. 
If you don't have the patience to do that, you're a gambler. You're trying to rush to make big money. And there's only one end result that comes from that. You blow your account. I'm telling you folks, if you don't believe me, watch when you try to do it. And you're going to be coming back and saying in the comment section, you were right. I wish I would have listened. And then the true test is, will you repeat the same error? Thinking you just weren't schooled enough yet. Okay. You didn't have the skill set yet. Now you do because you watched two more videos. And then you do it again. And then you'll write in the comment section, I just blew my account because I didn't do this and I didn't do that. What's wrong with me? I'm telling you what's wrong with you. You're rushing and you're gambling. And I don't teach that. So you're doing what? Everything I'm telling you not to do. So are you really ready to be taught? No. Once you break yourself and you have no more money in your account and you have no more money to put back in the account and you are questioning whether or not trading is for you, that, that is the student that's ready because they have nothing to go in and gamble with and it's all up from there. Or they say, trading's not for me. And guess what? That's the right decision because you know yourself better than anyone else. If you decide that, you know what? I've tried this. I've tried that. It isn't working. Trading's not for me. Well, God bless you. You've probably saved yourself a fortune because there's a lot of people that this will never work for because they are not disciplined. They're not responsible. They're not going to, they're not going to follow the rules and they're not going to do things as they were taught and they'll find fault with everything but themselves. And that is mental illness. I experienced it. I know it firsthand and it's painful. It's embarrassing. It is deflating. It feels horrible, but it's not permanent. It's absolutely corrected by certain things and skill sets, replacing bad habits. That's all, but it takes responsible discipline and a routine and adhering to it and being accountable to someone. Who is that? Someone you trust. Say, look, this is how I'm going to be doing my studies and my trading. And I just want to show you what, what I'm doing. And it's better if you're in a community that is like-minded. And that's what I try to foster. I try to create that. And unfortunately what happens is, is people on the outside that usually take shots at me or, you know, think this or that about, you know, about what I do, and what I teach or my students, they'll say it's a cult. When all I'm trying to do is empower that individual to be an independent thinker. I don't want you to believe me or anything I'm saying. I want you to go in, look at these markets with the lens I'm providing you. If I'm a fraud and these don't work, you're going to know right away. If you're really putting the effort in, you're going to know right away if these things are valid or not. But for those that have done the work, nobody's convincing them otherwise now that it absolutely is the truth. And it's consistent. But when I say consistent, that's not the same thing as it happens every single day in the same pair that you look at. Like, for instance, it's none of the things I'm teaching are existing in this pair right now. That's why my private group and none of you have seen anything with this pair from me for a long, long time. Because it's not showing clear, clean price action. So since it's not doing it, I take my hand off of it and my attention goes elsewhere. Where has it been diverted to? Index futures. Index futures will have this type of price action soon. Does it mean that Forex trading is dead? No. Does it mean the algorithm has stopped working? No. It just means that it's being heavily manipulated. So what does that mean for you internally? Don't touch it. This is a rattlesnake. If you see a rattlesnake on a trail and you're walking down there and you hear that rattle, I've never seen a rattlesnake live in front of me. Okay. But I'm telling you what, I'd recognize it if it started rattling and I'm going to stand still and I'm going to look around and find it and wherever it is, I'm backing away from it. Simple. Well, I treat these times in the marketplace just like that because there were times where I looked at this and said, I'm better than the average bear. I'll get in here and find the honey. Well, there you go. I got stung. 
That's why I'm talking to you like this, folks. You gave me your time, you gave me your ear, and you're giving me your trust. I'm giving you the best advice anybody could ever give you. Don't discount it as just talking, droning on, pontification. <laughs> no. This is real insight, folks. It's three decades of it. I lost a lot of money not doing what I'm teaching you to do. Like I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you the very things that I fell victim to and how to avoid it. Wouldn't you want to do that? I mean, I, I would literally give everything I had back in 1992 if I had someone like I'm trying to be for all of you. I'm trying to be that person that has real world experience, that knows what's going on, proves it. And I'm trying to show you, lower your expectations on yourself. Don't try to be an Olympic trader. Okay. You don't need to be Olympic. Just be consistent. If you find a bread and butter set up once a week, you can do a lot with that. It just takes consistency and money management. The money management does the heavy lifting. The, the hardest thing is finding something you're going to trust and stay with. And when it doesn't deliver or when it, you can't find it in your market, it doesn't change it. It just means you stand still. That's it. And it's hard. It's real hard because what happens if you go two weeks without taking a trade? What's that going to do for your mindset? For some of you, it's going to drive you nuts. Others, it's going to make you want to change the style of trading. And they're both wrong. 30 years taught me that. Books didn't teach me that. Books talked about system hopping, but you don't really know that lesson until you blow accounts, do dozens of different trading styles and approaches that don't work. They have no sound logic in the marketplace. Why it's doing this and doing that diversions indicated this harmonic, that all those things are something that promotes the idea of a religious view on the marketplace and not just time and price. Time and price is not a religion. It's the truth. That's what these markets deliver on. Look at the chart. What's, what's at the bottom of the chart? Time. What's on the vertical axis? Price. Why are you complicating it? You're saying I'm complicating it. Why are you? You're adding triangles and shapes and all these things and moving averages and all this stuff on your chart instead of just looking at what these candlesticks are documenting. Where was it an hour ago? Where was it last Friday? Where is it likely to go today? Where is it likely to go by the end of the week? If you ask those questions every single time you sit in front of the charts, you'll have a pretty good idea of what it's likely to do. Will it happen every single time? No. But by itself, that right there, what I just mentioned to you, that was the first steps for me to stop looking at those books. Those books are going to tell you things that 90% of people that trade lose money on. Let's be, let's be honest, folks. Let's just call it like it is, okay? All of those books, all of those teachers, all these YouTube channels, everybody out there is talking about the same things that result in the 90% blowout of live traders. So why are you holding on to that stuff with a death grip? No, no, no. It's going to work for me. I did that same thing. And I lost. Blue accounts over and over again. Crying, tears, weeping. Why can't I figure it out? Those things are in a 90% bracket of losing money. If you walk down the road and you see these glasses of water, free to drink, you walk over to it, you pick it up, you sniff it, just doesn't feel right. And you take a step back and you watch other people walk over there and as soon as they take a drink, you start choking, they drop dead right there. How many people do you need to see pick up that glass take a drink and drop dead before you realize it's probably not a good idea for you to have a swig <laughs> but unfortunately marketing as 
what it is, okay, there's always some clever little way, gimmicks is what they are, of making it seem like there's this new twist on something old, okay? And bad logic, no matter how much lipstick you put on it, is still bad logic. And you can't change that. So the idea is for you to find it in the price action. The things you're looking for in the chart or in price action, they must appear clearly in price. And if it's not clear, if it's real muddy and just choppy like this, it's indicating to you that this is not a market. The smart money is going to sit down and say, yeah, this is where we're going to operate today. It's heavily manipulated. It's not being allowed to trade freely. It's held. So if it's being held and manipulated, do you want to be in there? Because if you are doing that, you're gambling. So don't do that. So you have to think algorithmically. How do you pair your orders? If you don't have this mindset going in before you click the enter button of your trade, you are gambling. You have no idea what you're doing. You're trying to guess. You're in there seeing what would happen if I did this. And then when it works, you're telling yourself, wow, if I did that with real money, I could quit my job in three months. Wrong. And when it's bad, you're thinking, oh, well, I wouldn't have took that trade anyway. <laughs> I'm really cool and astute. I'm an apt pupil of price action. No, you're a gambler. You're dabbling with a demo account and you're not learning anything. You're conditioning yourself to believe that these sensations that you feel, when it's right, it's skill. And when it's not, well, that was just you just playing around. You weren't really doing anything serious about it. And that creates toxic thinking. And it builds a false sense of security and in certain instances, some individuals literally go out and say, well, I'm going to put live money in there because, you know, I got lucky a couple of times and I could afford, uh, you know, a couple thousand dollars and I could do this and I could do that if I, if I made that. And that's what, that's what everybody does. They fall victim to that. I don't want you doing that. You have to have a real reason why you're doing something, even in demo. Otherwise you're teaching yourself to think, well, and properly about what it is that you're trying to do in these marketplaces. But the main thing is, is you're looking for an opportunity to anticipate the expansion of that daily candle in one direction or the other, either higher or lower. And in that direction, higher or lower, where's it likely to go? And the easiest thing I teach is old highs and old lows and relative equal highs and relative equal lows. Those two ways of looking for pools of liquidity are the easiest, most visual representations of targeting there is. It's, it's simple because it's based on sound logic that the algorithm will never be changed because of. Because old highs, right above that, is always going to be buy side liquidity. Buy stops are going to rest above that. And below old lows, there's sell stops resting below that. It's always going to be that way, folks. It always will be that way. Don't send me comments in the videos. <laughs> Please don't send me emails asking me that question. Do I think by me teaching, is it going to break it? Are they going to change their route? They're not changing anything. They can't change it because that's the way these markets book. That's the way it is, folks. It's the way it is. The sky's blue. Not all the time, but the sky is blue. The grass is green. Not all the time, but the grass is green. You follow what I'm saying? <laughs> so these are rules we live by. Sometimes there's going to be these outliers, these things that creep in that cause your interpretation of price to be incorrect. And guess what that means? You did something wrong. Does that mean that you're a failed trader? No, it just means you made a mistake. That You're human. I'm human. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to read it wrong. I'm going to interpret it wrong. I'm going to react too late. I'm going to react too soon. I'm going to anticipate things that are not likely to occur. And then either I have to take the loss or I reverse. These are all things that you're going to have to be met with in time. And you're going to have to see whether or not this is for you. And some of you, in all honesty, this isn't going to be for you. Not my stuff alone, but trading in general, because it's risky. And don't ever think that Something magical is going to happen. If you're not consistently profitable in a demo account and you're not consistently 
finding setups, executing them, getting in and getting out with confidence on the lowest of leverage. See, that's what I don't like about. I know some of you are, you know, I don't, I don't know how you guys link. Like when you, I don't know how you guys link in the comments. People link me, but every time I try to link someone, Either I'm putting their name in wrong, <laughs> it never links it, so I never do that. But they'll make videos, and I see it as a mention in YouTube. Sometimes it's a day or two late, so it's not like I'm ignoring you, but for whatever reason, I get these notifications that are days late. And I see folks that are doing videos and are recording themselves actually entering in the trades on the paper trading application on TradingView, which is great. But they're using leverage that everybody knows that they are not really in a position to afford so i know it feels cool it feels flashy and you know it might feel like you're playing a video game i don't want you to have that mindset i want you to think about how you can make this as boring as possible because if you make it boring you won't be a victim of your emotions it'll be just like you go to work i'm not saying you love going to your job but you know, doing those things that you go to work to do yields you what? That paycheck at the end of the week. That's your minimum expectation. You get to work and do what's expected of you. Anything above that, then obviously it's up to your manager to decide whether or not it's warranted to receive anything more than your standard pay. But you need to treat this just like that. It's a business. So when you're doing your executions, don't be influenced by trolls or hecklers in the comment section saying, oh, well, you know, you, you know, you're doing micro lots, one micro lot. It's not about that size of leverage. It's about you finding the consistency of getting in, knowing what you're looking for in terms of managing the risk, in terms of the points or pips, not the money, not the money. The money is a derivative of doing the right things. In the beginning, you need to focus on doing the right things. The logic needs to be there, not the reaction emotionally and psychologically to fake demo money. Don't do that. You're actually causing yourself barriers. It really is creating a barrier for you to find success if you do those things. It feels cool. It feels fun. Like, yeah, if I would have been a real trade, I could have made this much money. But you didn't. So let that be the reality. You didn't. So you're really tricking and conditioning yourself improperly, which is the opposite of what I teach my students with backtesting. Whereas I teach my students when they do their backtesting in their annotations, they write in there as if they saw the trade happening beforehand. And by doing that, it's like self-talk. You're speaking to your subconscious and your subconscious is going to refer back to that as a false memory because it's a positive reinforcement. It teaches you because of pattern recognition and over and over again, being exposed to the same elements and you're reinforcing yourself with your own comments and your own cheerleading. You're fortifying your expectations going forward on this pattern yielding something in the past not that it's going to absolutely work in the future all the time, but we as price action traders, we look for signatures that repeat. Nothing is guaranteed that's going to repeat. That's why we have to have stop loss. That way we know that there's risk in this market. Every market in trading has risk. But if you're going to hone an edge or a model, you need to have a framework and you start by backtesting. And that backtesting in your annotations, you talk about how it feels good to see this move deliver as I was expecting from this fair value gap up to this buy side liquidity pool during the hours of this and this. And this is what my model suggests I should be looking for each day. Notice I didn't say I was stupid. I was playing video games and I was watching some YouTuber talking about some nonsense and I missed the trade setup. I should have known better. Never do that kind of stuff. Not in your backtesting, not in anything that you're recording in your journal. Everything has to be positive. You're sugarcoating everything in your backtesting. You're tricking your brain to see that as experience. So that way, when you see it forming live, you're not going to be in fear and trepidation of 
oh, it's going to be a painful experience. And again, when right now you don't have the experience yet, but because you keep logging it with back testing, you're filling your brain up with a lot of pseudo memories. So you're doing the, the ideal utilization of a lie. This is called what it is. You're lying to yourself. And trolls are going to love this. <laughs> You're lying to yourself with positive reinforcement. Okay? So that way when you look at something forming in real time, it will be remembered and you won't have any negative triggering because of toxic annotations or toxic thinking. You'll have memories of, oh yeah, I remember seeing that. And your subconscious, you may not see it or understand it or feel it when you're doing it, but your subconscious reverts back to those experiences that you've logged with positive reinforcement. Don't take a demo account and do that same thing with, I'm going to over leverage my demo account or paper trading account and do a, a size of leveraging that there's no way I would be able to Number one, put the trade on because I would be too scared because I'm a new trader and I'm going to be afraid of any fluctuation. If I put on a million dollars worth of leverage, I can't really sit through the spread opening up on me when I put the trade on initially, let alone whether the ups and downs and initially, you know, as the trade pans out. You're teaching yourself to anticipate a hopeful outcome with ridiculous leverage. And you're teaching yourself that that negative drawdown that you're experiencing is not something to be worried about because you're only looking for the dopamine hit if you did it right. And that video game high score means absolutely nothing in your growth. You've created a speed bump and sometimes a barrier to being consistently profitable. Think. When you do those things, what you're saying is, I'm putting blinders on. I don't really see the real risk here because it's paper money. And I want to show on my video a really high profitability in the end result because you want clout. Every single time, every single time I see one of my students, whether from the YouTube community or some of my mentorship students that are in private group that have YouTube channels, They'll make a video and they'll use really high leverage, but they may have executed extremely well, managed the whole thing from beginning to end. My comment consistently is next time, even though I've commented and said, you know, well done on the other stuff, I will always tell them next time use realistic leverage. That's my only criticism, not because of me trying to kick the legs out from underneath them. I'm not trying to steal their steam or their drive or motivation. I'm being the best influence I can because I don't want them filling their head up with things that are toxic because that's, that's what that is. It's all about clout and you don't want clout. You want consistently profitable. Trust me, being consistently profitable feels a whole lot better than clout on the internet. I don't need Everybody will love me and look at me. I've been here for a long time and there's a lot of people that hate me for no justified reason. But the point is none of that stuff causes me to lose any sleep. So don't invite those environments where other people can influence your performance, your expectations on yourself, your model, your trading. None of these jokers on the internet should have any influence on you. None. They don't have it on me. Why? Because I have rooted, deep rooted sound logic in the things that I'm looking for. You all are experiencing that. You're seeing it firsthand. You're seeing it and it's encouraging. So don't make the mistakes of adding these little things, these flavor enhancers to your experience. Okay. And calling them something that they're not because they're not going to make you better. They're going to actually hurt you by over leveraging just because you want to see big numbers show up on your, on your trade. Everybody watching knows that you put a demo trade on. Everybody knows that you put a paper trade on. They know. So don't, you know, parade around with it. Like it's a big deal. It's not. So the way you make it more respectful to your viewers and also 
Remove the element of clout chasing. Use the smallest leverage. Let the people that want to heckle, let them heckle. You worry about being consistent. If you want to showcase your skill set, do the executions and use the lowest leverage possible. And let that be the example that you're showcasing.